Did you know that you can actually break your neck from swinging a golf club too hard? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 32-year-old male who came to my office complaining of neck pain for the past week. His pain began about a week ago when he went to Top Golf with some friends and he swung the club for several hours. He by no means is a golfer, but like many of us that go to Top Golf, we just like to have a good time, have some drinks, and enjoy some friends. The pain began very abruptly after taking a swing and he noticed a pop in his neck. So he went to the chiropractor the next day, did not get x-rays at that time, and had a neck manipulation done, which seemed to make the pain worse. On physical examination, he had severe pain if you pushed on the back of his neck and you could even notice a little bit of crepitus. That means like an air popping kind of sensation when you touch the skin. Not usually a good sign. Many of you guys got the diagnosis immediately. He has a C6 spinous process fracture, also known as a clay shoveler's fracture. So you're saying that he broke his neck from swinging a golf club? Actually, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. This is essentially an avulsion fracture of the spinous process, usually of C6 or C7. It was defined in the 1930s when you had a lot of people developing this fracture from clay shoveling, which they did for a living. The thing about shoveling clay is that it's very heavy on the tip of the shovel, and if you lift your arms while flexing your neck, you're putting a lot of tension on the muscles on the back part of the spinous process. What's the spinous process? If you take your hands and you press on the back part of your neck, the spinous process is that bone that you feel, and the C7 spinous process is typically the most prominent bone that sticks out the most in the bottom part of your neck. The purpose of why we have a spinous process on our spine is for muscles to attach there to allow our head to turn side to side or up and down. Here you can see where the muscles attach from the spinous process to the transverse process of a lower vertebrae. If you contract the right side of these muscles, your head will turn to the right. And if you contract both sides, it will extend your head. So if you're doing repetitive motions with your head flexed and your muscles are trying to contract, it's putting a lot of forces on your spinous process. You have your arms extended and you have weights at the end of your arms. Your neck will work over time. And if you do that repetitively, you can actually avulse that part of the bone or essentially break off the tip of that bone. And in our patient's case, it was when he was swinging a golf club repetitively. The other common cause of a clay shoveler's fracture is actually direct trauma, where you can get hit directly on the back part of your spine and break off one of those bones. I see it commonly in car accidents, as well as direct falls on the spine, like falling down some stairs. Now the best part as a patient, if you suffer one of these fractures, is that they usually don't require bracing, and most importantly, is that they don't require surgery. But the bad news is, they really do hurt. And in our patient's case, the chiropractic adjustment likely did not do anything except exacerbate the pain. The treatment is rest, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories to help calm down the inflammation, and most importantly, time for the fracture to heal. I find that most patients' pain significantly improves in four to six weeks, and it rarely causes any chronic symptoms. Rest is incredibly important because you can imagine that if the bone is broken where the muscles attach, anytime you turn your head side to side, it will hurt. So some professionals will put their patient in a collar just to help avoid turning the head and thus helping the pain. In our patient's case, we did treat him conservatively with rest and anti-inflammatories, and in six weeks, he was completely better. And he no longer is gonna play top golf excessively when he's inebriated. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.